Well, hi everybody. This is Angelo Quinones and Yuri Shine Ministries. I am Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And so we're coming to John one one and the full Greek construction of it, and, and a theological look, of course. I mean, I already said that you can't miss Logos and Theos because of the trees, okay? And the trees is the full Greek construction. There's a lot of glory in here. The glory of uh, Logos and Theos and the glory of the, the full Greek construction that, that's in these uh, three parts, which I call um, progression of thoughts. And so um, so that's it. Now, now we're in uh, the part of the series that's called Theos in the Predicate Position. So we have to understand what's a predicate. Okay, what's a thousand a predicate position and what are predicate adjectives and how to identify a predicate adjective and give that to the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses to, to placate or to appease the witnesses because they call Logos a god here with a small g. Okay, now I can see if they call them a god with a capital G like they do, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, God uh, throughout, you know, their scriptures. But it's not even that. It's, it's, it's listen. It's a god with a small g. So we can't have that. Okay, we can't we can't trust the witnesses. Okay, magic wheat and corn. You know the great pyramid of Egypt is on par with the Bible. So we you know the the, the different return dates for Jesus and he never came back. So we can't we can't put our trust in the witnesses. No, I never was a witness, so I don't have that aspect coming into this, you know, pool of arguments. You understand what I'm saying? And incidentally, this, this full Greek construction series uh, tries to attack every single of us that has to do with us dealing with the witnesses, whether it be, you know, John 14, 28, or 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28, or whatever the case may be, or John 1, 3, just coming up down the road. Okay? <laughs> you know, John chapter 8, verse 58, every argument that comes into play, that comes into the debate, that comes into the campaign we're looking at. And so I want you to get so familiar with the Greek construction, all the cases, all the verbs, whatever the case may be, that when a, a JW knocks on your door, you're going to be ready for them and either to reach or to defeat so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. That's just what we can do. And that's what I'm planning to do here continuously. So, so I guess that's the, you know, the imperfect tense in this series. Okay. So if this is the, so, so if you wanted something like this, a full Greek construct, construction series of John one one, which is not even up on you on YouTube. Okay. Uh, this is the series that you wanted. You look at um, you were looking at A, B, and C, alpha, beta, and gamma of this verse in all its glory. Now we can't touch. You know, everything that has to, even theologically speaking, that has to do with Logos and Theos, that's too deep for tears, okay? The no, more deeper you get into it, the you know, it's, instead of becoming shallower, it becomes deeper into the pool, okay? So that's just it. So we can, but we can touch the, the full Greek construction. We can, do the, we can do that. We can know all about that. That we can know all about. That's possible. It is possible to understand all the cases, all, all the verbs in Greek and stuff like that. We can handle that. We can do that. Praise God. Okay? But to get into, you know, all knowledge of Theos and, and Lagos, well, that's just, you know, or Logos and Theos. I don't care how you pronounce the Omicron nowadays. It's called Omicron. Yeah, we can't do it. Now, incidentally, you know, mentioning Omicron, Okay, um, I have to, um, before we pray and before we get into the, the verse, before we get into the discussion, the debate and campaign, um, for, and I was telling my wife uh, this, uh, uh, I was telling my wife, Riza, um, this, like, the day before yesterday, or whatever the case may be, that now, and I was so upset about this, you know, so it's just like, you know, when women get upset, when they get upset that, well, you know, you're using our names for hurricanes and stuff like that, or whatever the case may be, why don't you use guys' names, you know, like Tom, whatever, Dick and Harry, why do you have to use, you know, um, you know, uh, Diana, or, uh, or whatever the case may be for these storms, okay, well, I, I felt the same way um, with the Greek because now I have to come in it, come in it, right? Like, like you know, um, giving, imparting this information to people. Now I have to uh, say to them, well, Delta is not a virus. Okay, that's a Greek letter that they're using Greek letter for for these viruses and stuff like that. Now Delta variant, uh, Omicron variant. I mean, you know, that's the D and the O in, in Greek. 
And so unfortunately, I have to tell people that now. And, you know, when we're discussing Omicron, oh, and it says maybe a child or whatever the case may be, you know, adult, that, that, that has nothing to do with Greek, or that, that, that has nothing, doesn't know anything about Greek at all. Oh, I know what Omicron is, it's a virus. <laughs> it's not, okay? Okay? It's a Greek letter that they use as an appellation or a designation for a virus. Okay? That's a, that's a Greek letter, Omicron. Now it's called Omicron, but in biblical Greek, we're going to see, even in this, a study that is actually Omicron and not Omicron. That's what just that's modern Greek, Omicron. You know what I'm saying? Okay, good. So let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you glorifying your holy name because it is great. You are great. You are the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord and, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you are our God. So we come to you boldly, confidently, with much assurance that not only are you going to. Um, uh, see us through this discussion on John 1.1, 1, 1, which is very difficult to touch, Lord, without your Holy Spirit, without your, your hand in this uh, series, we can do nothing or nothing. And so I, I just, I, I ask you for the forgiveness of my sins, for the cleansing of my sins by the precious blood of Jesus, for the precious blood of Jesus, and um, that you would um, look upon us and, and shower your blessing upon this study. Make us bold and confident. Make us to receive every, everything that's here about you and about uh, Logos, who became your son, who emptied himself and took upon himself an additional nature. So we just come to you and we just thank you for all things. And I just pray with such a special uh, overshadowing of yourself and uh, putting that light upon us in this study and that we can you know, do great things only in in you and in um, your son's name in jesus name i ask all of these things amen now let's get into the um the pronunciation of this and then we'll get into the manuscript evidence because we have to deal with this first okay we don't have to deal with it when it gets to uh you know d or f uh, one of those manuscripts we don't have to deal with it when definitely we don't have to deal with it in c okay but we have to deal with it because it is um, in the oldest existing um, Greek manuscripts uh, that we have of the Gospel of John, P66, P75, and stuff like that. We're going to see that. We, we're going to we're gonna have to deal with this, okay? So we just can't, you know, put it under the rug and stuff like that and say, oh, well, you know, hey, God, I really don't know how to deal with that because, I mean, is it part of the Bible? <laughs> you know, it is. So don't be afraid of it. It is. Okay, and so that's what this uh, series is, is trying to help you to accomplish, is to have a comprehension, okay, to have a deep understanding of the biblical Greek of this text, okay? Now, let me give you the American Standard Pronunciation, or the Standard Pronunciation, or the Biblical Pronunciation, which basically has differences, okay, that are very stark between it and the modern way of saying it, okay? And you're going you're gonna to notice that... Uh, that the O is A ah in Biblical Greek and, and, um, and things like that. And um, modern Greek, they love the E and they love the O and they love the E and all that other stuff. So they, so they you know, it's, it's a difference in pronunciation. So let me give you the standard or the, what I call the Biblical pronunciation fuss. Okay, you know what I'm saying, what I mean? So let's get it. Get into it. Now, I, I just have to say this also. I have to qualify um, the way I'm studying is that I just got the second uh, shot, uh, visor vaccine shot. Um, and so I'm fully vaccinated. Yeah, that's fine and dandy, but I feel better than I did the last week. But I'm still very, very tired. Uh, I'm, I'm groggy. I'm, um, I'm just sleepy. I'm not really maybe sleepy, but just like a little, I don't know, a little woozy or dizzy or whatever the case may be so i mean you know it didn't really hit me hard and it's already um basically 17 days since i got the shot so i'm very, kind of clear but it's still so i'm feeling the tail in tail in uh tail end effect of the shot and if you got the shot like i did you know what i'm talking about okay so i'm sorry that i'm a little bit slow and stuff like that i'm slow anyway because i'm legally blind i mean you know i have useful eyesight i can see things on the screen with my magnifying glass and stuff like that and if i see you in person i'm going to see you like a small doll like that but you know so i can handle that I, i've been born with that condition octop, act, optic atrophy anyway that i see things in, in a miniature way in a toyish sort of a way so um but 
on top of that problem, I have the the tail uh, end effect of the of the of virus uh, vaccine. You know, of the of the vaccine I should say for the virus. You know, so um, so uh, I'm fully vaccinated. Thank God, praise God for that. I mean, I have my card, so you know. And also, I just want to qualify another thing. I just want to add another thing that um, that um, <clears throat> that I am in the Philippines, having relocated from the United States of America to the Philippines. So I mean, it's going to be noises that you don't normally hear um in did that you didn't normally hear in my bible studies when i was in the united states of america having been born there spanish american you know the deal and i mean you just don't hear you know roosters crowing and all this other stuff that you hear here and that's just the deal now let's get into the um biblical pronunciation first Enarche in halagas kai halagas in prastan fean Kai theas in ha lagas. Enarche in ha lagas. Kai ha lagas in prastan fean. Kai theas in ha lagas. Okay? En arche in ha lagas. Kai ha lagas in prastan fean. Kai theas in ha lagas. Now, I like the the modern way better because it's, you can just go faster and sound like a Greek if he, even though you ain't Greek. Okay, you understand what I mean? It goes something like this. En arche in o logos, que o logos in proston theon, que theos in o logos. You see what I'm saying? En arche in o logos, que o logos in proston theon, que theos in o logos. Now say it slower. En arche in o logos que o logos in prostonteon que teos in o logos okay so you saw differences there the ka is a k nowadays you know what i'm saying the a is an o the a is an e <laughs> you know what i'm saying and so that's just the deal so they love that that the a e all sound in their uh, way of saying it nowadays and, and it's not even nowadays I'm, I'm saying that's modern greek and modern greek has been around for decades i mean when you say modern greek they were talking about modern greek and emmanuel greek grammar the greek new testament by dana and mancy so i mean they talked about modern greek at that time and that was in the 1950s 60s 70s and 80s and whatever the case may be whatever that the last edition of that great manual which i think is the greatest manual ever done okay um, you know, it's just, it's just hi, hun. Hi, my love. So, um, that's my wife, Riza. And so, uh, you know, so I mean, you know, modern Greek has been around for several years. Okay, not only now, you know, so that's just it. But, um, energy in o logos, que o logos in prostonte, on que teos in o logos. Okay, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Another translation says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was the same as God. Yet another translation says something like this, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and what God was, the Word was. You understand what I'm saying? Yet another translation says something like this, this is Manti's uh, translation. You okay, hon? You looking for something? Okay, close the door, my lover. Uh, it says something like this uh, In the beginning was the word And the word was with God And the word was deity You know what I'm saying? Deity And that's okay Because that's, 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 what, that's what theos means So theos I really don't care how you pronounce it It means deity So Julius Armand He, you know, looked at that word And, and well, just gave it a, a proper translation It means deity or God Okay? So that's just it Incidentally the Greek letter theta, nowadays called theta, okay, means divine. It actually means divine. Now, I'm not saying that every single, you know, occurrence, that when somebody has that letter in, embedded in their um, name, okay, that it means divine. Like Thomas, so what? Thomas, I uh, mean, you understand what I mean? That has, you know, theta, nowadays called theta in it. So he's divine. No, I'm not talking about that, but I'm just saying, in an incidental, uh, incidental way, Theta, nowadays called Theta, means divine. So the first letter in Theos or Theos means divine. That's what it means. There's a book with the meanings of each of these letters. Okay? And that means something. Like Alpha means rising and, and Beta, nowadays called Vita, means 
basis or foundation and then you know sigma means to synchronize and that's why probably i'm saying that's why probably the 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 future transformative is, is sigma because it means to synchronize and it has to do with time and getting back to this so we saw the biblical pronunciations let's get into the greek manuscripts before we get to into theos in or theos in the predicate position uh, so we already saw that P66 and 75, okay, these papyri manuscripts, okay, P66 goes back to the, um, uh, the 2nd century, I believe, uh, one, what is it, 175 to 200 AD, okay, so that's the 2nd century, so, um, so that's just the deal. So that's the oldest existing gospel, uh, uh, you know, gospel of John that we have. It's incomplete, though. But it collaborates this. Uh, I'm, I'm using it because it collaborates this uh, 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 of us. It substantiates it. It authenticates it. You understand what I'm saying? Sinaitic is also known as uh, manuscript Aleph or uh, the zero one manuscript. I mean, it got different ways of saying it. Sinaiticus, uh, Sinaiticus. Uh, I mean, you know. And uh, Vaticanus, I mean, also known as Manuscript 03 or Manuscript B, is a Latin uh, letter uh, uh, B, like in Bible. And that authenticates this. The United Bible Society's uh, fourth edition that I have over here, I, know, I think there's a fifth edition, but the fourth edition, it authenticates it also on page 250. So if you want to follow along in your Greek uh, uh, New Testament, uh, the United Bible Society's uh, Greek New Testament, it, it, it has that on that page, on uh, page 250, okay? No doubt that the fifth uh, one, uh, 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 you know, uh, has it. Uh, and also, Tyndale House uh, Greek New Testament, which I plan to get, has it as well. Also, the Texas Receptus has it, okay? So that has that. And so, I mean, you know, Byzantine text form uh, has it, as a matter of fact, by Pierre uh, Pont and Company, um, and that was published in uh, 2005, and a wonderful Greek New Testament, it's just based on the Byzantine uh, text form, that has it. So basically, um, the manuscripts that don't have it is the C manuscript, also known as the 04 manuscript, it's a 5th century text, uh, Ephraimi Rescriptus. That doesn't have it. It just has a prepositional phrase and our G after that it has nothing. Nothing else. Okay. Nothing else of uh, John 11A. 1, 1 uh, nothing of John 11B 1, 1 and C. Which I effectually call this a Syrian section because if you're born again, you're going to believe in the deity of Christ. If you're not born again, you're not going to believe in the full deity of Christ. That's just all there is to it. And you might not even believe, okay, in nature 2 or nature uh, B. Okay. There's a lot of cults and sects that don't even believe in the body, in the body uh, of Christ. He had a body, and if they don't believe that, well, they're not going to be believe in the bodily resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You understand what I mean? So the C manuscript doesn't have this uh, text, and the D or F uh, manuscript also doesn't have this uh, uh, full text, John 1.1. 1, 1. It only has John 1.1a, 1, and at he in Halagos. Okay, it doesn't have uh, anything else. So um, I don't have, and now you can see all of these variant readings in a uh, new. In a volume called uh, John, right? I'll just have John there. You can get it on Amazon.com. Um, New Testament Greek Manuscripts, edited and arranged by Ruben Swanson and forwarded by the great Greek scholar Bruce and Metzka. Okay, uh, he, so he forwarded the book. And, um, you know, and they, and they have different books of the Bible. Um, probably when you get to the smaller letters of the Bible, like First and Second Peter, maybe they'll be together. I'm just guessing because I don't have those. I do have like uh, seven of them um, from all, all the Gospels, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis Apostolon, and uh, Romans, and, and First Corinthians, and, and things like that in Galatians. But uh, that's not here with me, unfortunately. That's in my brother's house, if, 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 even if, if it survived the flood. <clears throat> okay, so this, 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 this is part of the Bible. Now, I, I want to add another thing that I added before. That manuscript L, L, like in Larry, L, it's from the 8th or 9th uh, century. That has an extra what? Now, now, remember in my other studies, and I have hundreds of studies of, of John 1, 1, praise the Lord. He has the glory, not me. I mean, I have it on voice text uh, messages for, for people, uh, a, a, a wide collection of those. 
um, a mini series uh, full grid construction the mega series which this is part of M mega means that it's more than 15 minutes it could be a half an hour it could be two hours it could be three hours like that one hour you know like that that's why I call it mega and the other one I call mini because it's only 14 or 15 minutes you know um, the L manuscript has an extra article Ha, huh. okay. Now, nowadays it's called all. The article nowadays is called all, like all Canada. The, the Canada, you know, the country of Canada, you know. And um, incidentally, the article for the feminine will be E, like E Turquia, you know, that uh, nom nominative uh, form of the article that we, we call hey. In biblical Greek, it's called E, actually. Remember, I said that they love the E sound. You know, they, le they love the E sound, according to modern Greeks. <coughs> So, the El Manuscripts has the ha huh in front of uh, uh, Theos, okay? It has, uh, now, now, remember, I already said in, in one, one of my other studies, in the, you know, of uh, Theos in a predicate position, that predicate adjectives in Greek, okay, can be anarthrous and can be articular. We're going to look at an example of that, okay? It's just not correct to say, either in a seminary or on YouTube, or whatever the case may be, that predicate adjectives are anarthrous. That's not true. Okay, that's not that's not really true. Uh, if you see, okay, an adjective, and um, like this, you know, like in uh, the you know what a what a, a to be word, Amy word, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, I'm talking about whether it be in an imperfect tense or whatever, you know, and and it's anarthrous. You're probably looking at a predicate adjective probably it's not that you are looking definitely at one okay because you got attributive adjectives also that can be anarthrous and can uh you know come with an article so your clue basically is the context is your overall clue is the context of these things because attributive adjectives and and and, and predicate adjectives are very similar in a way that you know, um, they, they like I said before, they can have adjectives. They can be articular, meaning that they can have an article, and they can be anarthrous. That means that no article. Okay. All right. So knowing all this and knowing, um, you know, who Lagos is, that he can, that that he subsisted continuously, timeless, and eternally. Okay. You understand what I mean? I mean, you have to understand who Lagos is or who Logos is. I mean, you have to understand that he subsisted, that he wasn't created. We saw the, we saw the, the, the best case scenarios for the witnesses, that they're not here. Okay? We already saw that. We already saw the Anarche, Epoias, and Ha, Theas, Tan, Lagan. It's not even near the Bible. Okay? Okay? It's not. In the beginning, God created the Logos. It's not here, and it's not even in, in, in anywhere in, in the 66 books of the Bible, any more than 30,000 verses of the Bible. It's not, it's not here. In the beginning, God created the Logos. So that's out. That's out the window that he was created. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Listen, all the scholars, basically, that I saw actually say that NRK, which appears um, another time in, in, um, in close proximity in verse 2, and in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, etc., and, of course, in the famous one, you know, and found and recorded in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the Greek Septuagint. Septuagint comes from the Latin word Septuaginta, which means 70. That's why you have the L, X, X, you know. L means 50, X means 10, X, X is, is another 10. And you have 70, uh, 72, you know, Jewish scholars translating uh, the Hebrew into Greek. And that's why it's called the L, X, X, or the 70, you know, like that, you know. I mean, that, that famous translation says something like this, okay? I don't know why it's in a singular for heaven. I mean, I just, uh, you know, because it should be uh, tus uranus, but anyway, it should be in a, in, a, in a plural, but it's not, okay? But it is what it is, and um, you don't have that construction in, in John chapter 1, verse 1. So, 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 so Logos can't be a creature. He cannot. Can't, Okay? He cannot be a creature. You don't have uh, in the beginning uh, the the word uh, became. Anarche again ita ha lagas or in the beginning God created the the, the sun. You know anarche apoyasin ha theas tan huias or huian I should say. And then you don't even have in the beginning was the sun. I could deal with that. There are some trinitarians that believe that. 
I can deal with it. I don't believe it. Walter Martin didn't believe it. So we disagree with Tartarian. We disagree with him. So-called church father. Okay? So, I mean, that's not even in the Bible. Okay? Uh, or, in the beginning was the angel. I can deal with that. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how. That's not in the Bible. But if it was, I could deal with that. It, it, especially if it was in the, in the Hebrew. Because, you know... Uh, the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesim, uh, which is in Hebrew uh, Ephesians, it's in a plural, im, you know. Ephesim, the book of Ephesians, well, the Apostle Paul in Ephesim 1 1 calls himself Malach, okay, messenger. So, in the 1817 edition of the Hebrew New Testament. So, I could deal with that, but it's not there anyway. We don't have to deal with it because it's not there. And in the beginning was Michael, well, I can't deal with that. I mean, he's an angel, he's a creature. And Arche in Ha Michael, I can't deal with that, but it's not there, so I don't have to deal with it. Okay? Bereshit Bara Elohim Hadabar, that's not even here in, in, in Hebrew, in the Hebrew uh, New Testament. Okay? Bereshit Bara, no, it's Bereshit Haya. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Bereshit in the in beginning. Bara made or created, and then uh, Elohim, and that's just a God. Incidentally, it doesn't say Ha Elohim there in 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 uh, Genesis chapter one verse one. It doesn't say Ha Elohim at all. It just says Elohim. So does it mean a God created something? No. Uh, created what? Well, created Ha the. Okay, it's Ha. It sounds like the same uh, Ha in Greek. Okay, in um in uh, biblical Greek. It doesn't look the same. It's squarish. It's, it's like a squarish sort of a thing, you know. It's, uh, it looks like the the looks like actually the the Greek P a little bit, you know. It looks like that a little bit, except for the slit in the in the the opening in the in the upper left hand corner. And the bar, D A B A R, word. That's not that's not there. Behrechit ha the bar. Or uh, be, uh, I'm sorry, that's uh, that's what it is. Beheshit bara Elohim hadabar. In the beginning, God created uh, the logos. The other one is 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 in the Bible in the uh, um, John chapter one verse one. Beheshit uh, means in the beginning, and um, haya means was, and then hadabar means uh, the what. So that's there, but you know the uh, you know the bara uh, beheshit uh, bara. Elohim, Hazabar, that's not found in the Bible at all. So knowing that, knowing what's here and what's not here, knowing that Tina is not here, like Tina Turner, like that Tina, some, some sort of adoration or, or uh, submission or something like that uh, by uh, Lagos to the Thaos, that's not there in John 1 would be. Alpha, Landa, Landa, Alpha, the word but, but this, but that, that's not there in John 1 would see. Haste is not there in John 1 would see also. You know what I'm saying? Deu is not in John 1 1 C. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, but God, uh, but the word was of God, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of inferiority uh, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, like uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Lagos, in that sense that 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 John made sure that you knew that that uh, Lagos was uh, created, but but that he was of God before the incarnation. Well, that's not there. Okay? And don't give me, you know, Malachi chapter, what, 5 verse 3 or whatever the case may be, or chapter 4 or whatever, or verse 4. Because I say that in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8, that my servant, the branch, that's why, you know, uh, that's why Jesus has a God, because it's, he is God's servant. Yeah, I what I'm saying. So you could use there's another of us that we use to actually defeat Jehovah's Witnesses. So knowing what's here and what's not here, then we can proceed to see about Theos in the predicate position in John 1 1C. Okay? So let's go ahead. Let's do it. So what does the verse say? Well, that part of the verse. Well, it says, um, Enarche, Ein Halagas, Kai Halagas, Ein Prastante An, Kai. And this is this is the part. Kai theas ain ha lagos. Now we saw that theas is a predicate adjective. It's describing lagos. Okay, it's not an attributive adjective. 
is not a substantival adjective. It is a predicate adjective. Okay? Now, we have to tell the witnesses that there are ten. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Is that clear? There are ten ways that a Greek noun can be definite without the article. Is that clear? As I make sure this is bright. There are, my baby's waking up Anna Devane, by the way. There are, I love you, my love. Daddy's here. Daddy's here, my love. There are ten different ways that a Greek noun can be definite without an article. Now, I already showed you one in John 1, 1. A, arche. Now, you know the paradigm for arche. It can mean ruler or it can mean beginning. It means beginning here because it has to do with time. Okay? Is that what I'm saying? And arche. All right, that prepositional phrase, N R G. N is the preposition. It looks like F, doesn't it? But it's N. Believe you me, that V-looking letter in in Biblical Greek or Modern Greek is not a V. Okay, there's no, there's no V in Biblical Greek. There there is a V in Modern Greek. I agree, but it's a different letter for that. That's the that's the beta nowadays called Vita. Okay, that's a B-looking letter. That's a that's a V. So if you're looking at something that looks like a V, it's not a V in any pronunciation. It is a um, uh, a nu. It's called a nu. Now it's called ni, but it's called a nu in biblical Greek, and that's an n. So it's not f. It's n. Okay, you understand what I mean? So that's a preposition. A preposition is a a what that that um, shows a relationship uh, between uh, two words. Now the n is showing you the relationship that logos has with our k. It's not above. Over the beginning, it's not under the beginning, it's alongside the beginning, it's not whatever like that. It's he, he's in the beginning, okay, in the beginning. But you know that the paradigm for our he, you know, our he, our he, our he, with the other subscript and our he, and in Lagos, you know the paradigm for that, you know, Lagas, Lagu, Lago, Lagan, Lagoi, Lagon, Lagois, Lagus, okay? So, uh, incidentally, um, the Greek word Arche is found 55 times in the Greek New Testament, and uh, Lagos is found uh, 330 times in the Greek New Testament, okay? And N is uh, about uh, one of 17 small uh, Greek prepositions uh, found and recorded in a manual grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dene and Manti. Okay? The other one is ek and, you know, hupa, meta, para, kata, pras, pra. I mean, anti. I mean, you have all these and, and more. You have all of these, you know, uh, uh, small prep, uh, prepositions. That takes at least one case. Some takes two. Some takes three, and stuff like that. So the the meaning, okay, of a preposition can vary according to what case it takes. Okay, this is taking the dative case and stuff like that. You know what I mean? All right, good. Now, um, so um, theos in a predicate position. Well, let's look at some examples. Okay, of theos in in um, or not theos, but Let's look at some examples of a predicate adjective, okay, <coughs> um, uh, in, in the Bible. And let's look at it with an article and without an article. Now, with an article, let's, let's check out, okay, and then I'll, I'll, I'll use the English first. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I believe it's verse 8, but let's, let's just check it out, though, Okay. It could be verse 8 or 9. Uh, so let's check it out here. Incidentally, I have there uh, Luke chapter 9, verse uh, 29, and Matthew chapter 17, verse 2. Two different Greek words there proving that Jesus can't be a God. Is that clear? The Holy Spirit wants you to know that Jesus is not a God with a small g. Okay? Greek was speaking, uh, I mean, listen, Luke was speaking to the Greeks. Matthew was speaking to the Jews. And the reason why Luke didn't use the same uh, Greek word that Matthew used in verse 2 of chapter 17 for the story of the uh, transfiguration of Jesus' face, I mean, you know, is because, you know, the Greeks would have thought that such a transfiguration, according to the Greek word that Matthew used, would have been a proof that Jesus was a god. He was transforming himself into a, uh, uh, in, in, into a deity or a god. Now, Luke avoids that by using a different Greek word. You know what I'm saying? So that's interesting altogether. 
Now, um, but let's get into um, um, predicate adjectives, and so let's use uh, the Bible for that. So let's go to First Corinthians, okay, chapter one, around verse eight, okay. And that's just it. So this is chapter one here, and then we get verse uh, eight, though. And that's just it. Well, it says over here, who will, okay, also uh, confirm you to the end? Blameless, it says, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is it actually right here, verse 9. Sorry about that. God is faithful. There you go. God is faithful uh, through whom <laughs> you... Uh, were called into a fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, what's the predicate adjective? We're going to look at it in Greek. Okay, you understand what I mean? Well, God is faithful. Let's like let's look at that in Greek. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's get to this app over here. Okay, and let's um, move to uh, Corinthians Alpha. Let's check that out. Alpha will be one, you know, like that. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, Ephesians, and that's uh, right here. Oh, oops, what's this? Don't tell me it's full. Can't be full. It's impossible. Okay. Um, where did it go? <clears throat> that's Galatians. There, that's, that's Galatians. So it'll be right over here. This is it right here. Okay, so let's go to verse 9, that's where it is, and let's check out the Greek, and then, you know, and then I could check it out without, um, with some training wheels, so that way you can follow along, just in case you, you don't know, okay, that's what we're here for, to learn, uh, together. Now that's verse 8, now, um, it appears actually in verse 9. Okay, there goes the word for faith here. Uh, <clears throat> it says, um, pistos, pistos confeas. Okay? And, uh, you know, de for through, you know, uh, de, uh, like that. But um, the both are in actors, actually. It says, um, uh, pistos, and then, no, well, actually, uh, theos is, is uh, articular. It has an article. Uh, pistos ha theos. Well, what, what, what's the subject of the sentence here? Well, hafeos, that's the, theos is the subject of the sentence here. There is no verb, by the way. Now, if it was here, it would be the third person form, estin. Okay, uh, it would be that. You understand what I'm saying? For the paradigm, uh, it'll be Amy, A, and Estin, I believe. I think that, 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 that you know, Amy is uh, uh, am, like, uh, ego Amy, I am, right? And then A will be uh, you are, right, a second person. And then the S then will be third person, uh, uh, he, she, or it is. In this case, okay, it will be God is because uh, hapeas um, indicates to me that that's the subject of the sentence, okay? But something doesn't have an article. So forget about the, the Greek word uh, S then not being here. Um, that you can put into your translation the what is. That, 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 that's allowable, okay? You can put the word is there because, I mean, that's, that's, that's the deal. So, I mean, if you don't have it here, you can put it in your, not only in English translation, but any kind of other language uh, uh, translation. You understand what I mean? <coughs> so, the subject of the sentence is theos and is articular. And that's a great indicator that that is the subject of the sentence. That's not all the time, the case. No pun intended. Because Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8, and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, you have hafe as, and in, 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 in either case, and in, 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 in those situations, okay, and in those texts, theos is not the subject of the sentence. We all know that. We don't want to get into the argument of Hebrews 1 8 and stuff like that. I already have a study on Hebrews 1 8, several studies. Why uh, Hathias cannot be the subject of the sentence. And I show you why. Okay? Uh, the Hathias is showing 
is a, is a, is a vocative and it's actually the highest showing special definiteness. Okay, special definiteness. Okay, uh, different from the omega, the inflection of a particle, like in uh, First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty, and I believe in other passages like that, uh, with the omega, you know, the inflection of a particle. Uh, well, that's showing special force. Okay, that's not used in uh, the inflection of particles. Not used in um, uh, Hebrews chapter one, verse eight. That's just an article. Because no, there's nothing else to show special definiteness, so the article has to be used. And the nominative ha article has to be used because of the construction of the of uh, of the of the noun. Okay, it's there, so you have to use ha. That's all there's to it. But getting back to this, the word for faith is spelled out P I S T O S O with a grab marker. So it's actually P stars. Okay. Not pistas, but pistas. Okay? Now, that means um, faithful. Okay? In Greek, it will be pi, iota, sigma, tau, nowadays called tough, omicron, nowadays called omicron, and final sigma. Okay? We got one, two, three, four, five, six different Greek letters and two different syllables. I mean, two syllables. You understand what I mean? <clears throat> but that's an arthritis. There's no article in front of uh, faithful here. Why? Because it's a predicate adjective. Okay? So when you're seeing this, okay, sort of adjective, remember that we have uh, predicate adjectives, uh, uh, attributive adjectives, and substantival adjectives, um, and so this falls under the category when you're looking at this. Perception is telling you and that this is an adjective. And then you analyze it and you see what kind of adjective it is. Well, then your conclusion is that it is a predicate adjective. And that's the deal. There's the same thing going on in John 1.1c. Now, though, but the problem is... It's not so cut and dry like that all the time. That predicate adjectives, uh, you know, never have articles. That's not the case, okay? Sometimes it does have an article. Now, in order to do that, to, to show you, let's get uh, an example where the predicate adjectives can have an article. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Well, let's get that. So let's see, let's go to Romans chapter, I believe chapter 4, verse 8. I, I hope I'm right on that. But let's, let's get, you know... Uh, did I say First Corinthians or Romans? I, I hope I said Romans. Though. Romans chapter 4, verse 8. So let's get there. A famous passage by the Apostle, classic passage by the Apostle Paul. You know what I mean? So let's get there. Um, Praxis Apostolon. You got Romans right here. I'm almost speaking Hebrew. <laughs> okay. That's that. That's just it. Now chapter 4 and in verse 8. Let's check it out. Hopefully that's there. Blessed is the man. That's all you need. It's right there. Blessed is the man who, uh, whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Is that clear? We should all have this memorized, by the way. Blessed is the man. Okay, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Is that clear? Let's check that out in Greek. Okay, let's check that out. Let's see. Yeah, okay, I'll pick this one. <laughs> this is Gladius. This is a glorious, this is the gospel though. The Lord, not us, that we did something for our salvation and that we rubbed out or blotted our transgressions and crimes. No, that's not Christianity. It's not, it's not you know, these phony baloney religions out there, you know. That 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 teach you that you can actually do something your salvation. That's not that's not Christianity at all. Okay, if somebody's telling you that, well, they get get out of that religion. It's a phony baloney religion. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> some called a sect. All right. So Praxis Apostolon and Romans is right here. Actually, I know it looks like a P, but it's actually an R in Greek. You see that P looking letter? Okay. And a W-looking letter to boot. Okay, that's a R, actually. It's actually with a rough breeding. 
Hra. Hra. Okay, and then uh, Omega, which looks like a W. It's not a W. It's an O, like in the word home. But let's get into um, chapter 4. You understand what I mean? Chapter 4. That'd be um, Delta, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, Delta. Now that it's called Delta, but you know, who cares? Uh, am I recording? Because it'll be absolutely a shame if it's not recording. I mean, if sometimes it's doing that, and, and especially, I mean, you know, if it's a bad study, if I, you know, wasn't really, you know, led or, or, or whatever the case, then who cares? But I mean, you know, I, I hope this is a good study. And as I said, we have to understand what's a, what's a, how to identify a, 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 a predicate adjective. And just because it doesn't have an article, it doesn't mean that it's uh, indefinite. It's not enough to hear Greg Stafford, okay, in the, in the, in the Greg Stafford and James White debating campaign. That, that, that's not going to teach us Greek. A hearing, you know, I mean, d d d please. There's three kinds of nouns, okay? Definite, indefinite, and qualitative. I mean, come on, man. Now, this, this is garbage, okay? To just look at it like that and that's it. I mean, that's why James White lost the debating campaign. Because he didn't have command of the Greek language. That's all there is, guys. All right. So that's just it. So this is chapter four. So let's look at verse eight. All right. Markarias, okay? That's blessed. Okay, it's just it. And look at that. Look at that Greek negative over there. It's very strong. Ooh, may. I mean, that is a strong taboot. It says over here, aner, aner ho, ooh, may. Okay, uh, lagi, lagi setai, lagi setai, uh, kurios. Okay, um, hamartian in that sins. Okay, blessed is the man. Okay, now that's just it. Now, um, this, this, I think, is not going to be suffice for us because. There's a problem here. It's an arthritis. Okay. <clears throat> Let me look at this one. Because that's not going to help our situation. Okay. Remember. Um, we found an article. An article. And that's not going to help me out. To give my illustration. Okay. So I'm going to have to find. Okay. Another manuscript. Uh, so another. Another. You know. So this. Let's see. If this can do it over here. Okay. Um, ch chapter 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Because we already saw an example of uh, of an anarthrous, uh, uh, you know, noun that's a predicate adjective, okay? But now we have to get one, um, uh, you know, um, you know, and actually the other one was actually uh, uh, not really the one I wanted also. With an article, let's let's check this out. Let's just backtrack a little bit, though. Okay. Let's see what this one uh, 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 proves to say. Bless it, and that's ma uh, makar markarias. The man, okay, aner, okay. So is is not here also against and that's u whom no and that's u me is is a double negative that's very strong in Greek very strong in Greek will uh reckon and that's in the future tense let's check out our um Lagi, and then you have. It's hard to see. Uh, setai. That that setai. That uh, the personal ending tie there, the connecting vowel. Um, uh, eta. Probably lengthen, and then you have the sigma there as a transformative for will. Okay, 
the other future tense uh, stem uh, is there also, uh, log, and they got the iota there. Okay, so they, you could, uh, that's how you can tell a future tense. But this um, is uh, this is a narthus, so this is not going to help me out. Uh, well, it will help me out, yeah, this because this is my example of the anarthur state of the predicate uh, adjective. This can help me out, okay? Um, so you see over here, uh, blessed is anarthurus, okay? Blessed there, okay? As an adjective there, you see, okay? And um, it's actually uh, makarias. Okay. Nominative masculine singular, Marcarias. That's a northers, and that's the adjective, that's the predicate adjective describing a K the man. Okay? And um so Blessed is anarthrus. That's my example. But let me show you, okay, a predicate adjective with an article. Okay, that's what I wanted to do first. So sorry about that, guys. So blessed doesn't have an article, but I have to show you, and I hope this does it though. If it doesn't do it, then then I'm cooked because I don't think I have another Greek New Testament here. <coughs> And this is where you can see actually a Romans in a Romans um, volume. Uh, New Testament Greek manuscripts uh, in chapter 4 verse 8 you can see the variant readings there on that page so if, if you have that copy you can pull it out and you can check it out okay but let's get into um, okay let's get into um, 1st Corinthians okay because that's the one that I wanted to see with an article though so I didn't see it God is faithful uh, faithful doesn't have um, uh, an article there in that uh, app that I saw, but let's check out over here though, and see. Hopefully, this is according to the most ancient authorities, and then this will have the article. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that'll be the case. If it's not, then I mean, you know. But actually, it's in verse nine, so let's see. Well, it doesn't have the article either. Okay, uh, pistos aha theos. Okay, let me pop out. Okay, this uh, sheet that actually has the translation where that occurs. Okay, so let me see if I can find it, though. Okay. All right, it says intermediate Greek. Okay. And let's see what we could do with this, okay? Okay, adjective section. You know what I'm saying? Predicate, it says with article. And let me see. Hopefully the translation is here. God is faithful. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8, and he doesn't have the article here. He doesn't have the article. It says with article here. Okay, with article, but there's no article there. Okay. Now, without the article, would be uh, the example of Romans uh, chapter. Uh, uh, it says over here, "Blessed is the man," and then that's from the ESV. So maybe you can see it in the ESV also that example. Okay, but I don't see one here. But what I'm trying to prove is that predicate adjectives can have, okay, an article, and it is possible for a predicate adjective not to have an article. Just like, okay, attributive adjectives also can be articular, and it also can be, okay, anarthrous. Okay? That's the, that's the deal here. Let's get back to our text. Okay, let's see this over here. <coughs> let's look at another 
Okay, um, another um, construction uh, like this. Let's look at, okay, um, a predicate adjective. Okay, um, in um, John chapter... Four verse uh, twenty four. So let's scroll down here. I like this app because it goes, it goes really, it flows. You know what I mean? I mean it goes like that. It's really, really, really quite great. Verse twenty one. Okay, let's see over here. Verse twenty four. It says something like this. It says over here, uh, panuma. That means spit it. Chaveas. Well, the 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 Estin is not there. Okay, God is spirit. This is a, is Estin, but you can supply that in your translation. But again, this predicate adjective, okay, Panuma is a Northrus. And you see the construction. Now, tell the witnesses. Ask the witnesses what kind of article that would be here, if it was if it was here. Ask ask the article. Ask them what kind of article would be here. You put them already in the defensive. Now, unless you, you don't know, unless you know, I should say rather, the article paradigm, you have 24 articles in the, in the paradigm for Greek, right? Biblical Greek has 24, uh, uh, what you call, you know, so-called definite articles. Ha-he-ta, tu-te-stu, to-te-to, tan ten tan And those are the singulars and the plural goes something like this, the plural outside of the paradigm. Um, hoi hai ta, ton ton ton, tois tais tois, and tus tas ta. Okay, those are all the 24 articles in Greek. As a matter of fact, there is no such uh, thing as an indefinite article paradigm in Biblical Greek. There is none. You find it in modern Greek, okay, enas, mia, ena, right, for the nominative singular, I believe, right? But you don't see that sort of paradigm in Biblical Greek. You want to tell the witnesses that there is no article, uh, indefinite article paradigm for Biblical Greek or Standard Greek or whatever you want to call it. Okay? That ex ex exists in modern Greek, but not in Biblical Greek. So they're, they're <coughs> that case is shot down, uh, basically, uh, right there. <coughs> Before you even start, forget about it not even having haste here. Okay, not even here, but you know what I mean, in John 1 1. Um, I see. But over here it says uh, after the 24, you have uh, the Greek P. It looks like a temple, uh, does, it, 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 doesn't it? That is typifying a, a Greek uh, structure. Um, it looks like a little stool, doesn't it? But that's the P in Greek. And then you have the N looking letter again. It's not an N, it's a V. Or <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a V. Uh, the V looking letter is not a V, it's an N, I should say, the other way around. And then you have the epsilon and upsilon. Now they call now they call epsilon that that U looking letter. And then you have the mu. Now they call me and then the alpha. So in 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 the biblical pronunciation, you have p, nu, epsilon, upsilon, mu. Sometimes called mu and then alpha. And then in modern Greek, it'll be uh, p, ni, epsilon, epsilon, mi, alpha. And they got the over the the U looking letter. You got a circumflex there. That's panuma. That's a neuter what? What would be the article? Well, there's only one spirit that, that you know, that, that it's in the singular. So um, it will be ta with an omicron. Tau and omicron. Nowadays called uh, tough and omicron. But it will be a T and an O for the article, for this what? It's not here. Okay? It's not here at all. Okay? So panuma is a northrus, okay, but it's a predicate adjective, okay, describing, okay, God, okay? It's not an attributive adjective. It's not. It's a predicate adjective, okay? <clears throat> the absence of the to be what, okay, estin, it doesn't really make a difference, <clears throat> okay, if it was, if it's there or not. <clears throat> sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, okay? Okay? And those, it says over here, those, uh, chi, and then a tus uh, can be translated as a pronoun. Those, uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, 
It says over here, Aprasku Nuntas, worship uh, Ahim, Altan, in okay, uh, Panuma, uh, Panuma T, actually, Panuma T is the dative uh, version of uh, uh, Panuma, okay, that the Iota can't subscribe underneath the Tau, so it has to be written after the Tau, right, in Panuma T. Uh, <clears throat> so the Panuma T is actually a singular in the dative and uh, uh, neuter, <clears throat> uh, lexical form being uh, Panuma, okay, and uh, and uh, ale fia uh, truth in truth there that's in the dates of uh, de uh, prasku name worship <coughs> now um, so we're, we're seeing situations where the predicate adjective is an arthros just like in um, Romans chapter 4, verse 8, that was an arthritis, okay, the word for blessed, right? The, 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 the predicate adjective describing man, right? Probably ish for man in, in, in the Hebrew New Testament, but it's two different, uh, two, at least two different words in Hebrew for, for man, Adam and uh, ish. Isha is actually a woman. This is an arthritis also. Okay? God, you know, how they also has a subject of the sentence. And and is is not here, but I mean you don't need it, as then, you know. But panuma is an arthritis. But it's a predicate adjective just like the one found and recorded. Okay. In John 1 1 C. That's our point. That Predicate adjectives, okay, can be anarthrous. And a predicate adjective doesn't need an article for it to be definite. It's already definite by nature, okay? This one here is definite. <clears throat> you understand what I mean? It's already definite. Just like our hey is definite. I'll prove it to you. You see, in our hand, and we're going to get back to it very quickly before I start talking on something else. The construction for in our hey is in beginning, okay, in, in English, but it's in our hey or in our he in Greek. Now, the our hey or our he does not have the article te. That would be te or ti, okay, nowadays, you know, modern Greek. But let's stick with uh, Biblical Greek or, or Standard Greek. Obite will be in a dative uh, singular feminine construction. This being a first declension word, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, a noun, uh, the root of the noun ending in alpha or eta. Well, this is one of those. Okay, this is the first declension. Second declension will be uh, uh, Greek nouns, okay, ending in an omicron. And then uh, third declensions are, you know, uh, Greek nouns ending in a consonant, like kappa and, and all that other stuff. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> or tau, whatever the case may be. But this arche is definite already. Okay? There are other examples of, of nouns that are, are, you know, that are not articular, that are definite. Now... The JWs looked at NRK if they were translating this 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 text. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think they were. I, I think they just got their work from Johannes Greenberg, who was a witch, and they got four or five copies from the Johannes Greenberg uh, Foundation. Why do I say that they weren't really scholars and they didn't uh, translate the Greek or the Hebrew? Well, I mean, remember the initial. Uh, Watchtower uh, uh, Bible uh, New World Translation came out in 1950. It's just, it's just a new, the, the, the New Testament came out. The Old uh, Testament uh, followed after, okay, but the New Testament was was uh, you know translated first, at least so they say. Now they were taken into cut those five uh, translators, so called the, the committee, the New World Translation. And they were found to be a fraud. They didn't know a Hebrew, and they didn't know any Greek. 
Now, there was one of the uh, five uh, so-called scholars that, 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 that lived in Greece and knew modern Greek. But actually, Walter Martin tested him out and asked him, well, what was the subject of the sentence in John 1.1? 1, 1? He didn't know. He didn't know it was Logos. It was just ridiculous. That's ABC Greek. You mean to tell me that you're a translator from the famous committee and you don't know that Logos is the subject of the census? Come on. Logos is the subject of the census here. Ha, Logos, I mean, you know, it's telling you that's, a, that's, a, that's an innovative, innovative, case, innovative case construction, right? And one of the uses of the, of the, of the nominative case is the subject nominative, Right? Nominative of appellation, nominative of, uh, of uh, you know, um, exclamation, I mean, you know, all these things, right? So, subject nominative, I mean, this is under the, the umbrella of, uh, of, of that. You, you mean to tell me you don't know this is the subject of the sentence in John 1, 1, A, B, and C? You, you, that's what you mean to tell me? <coughs> and you mean to, to, to say that, 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 that that's, a, that's a committee? You're trusting them with your eternal destiny? And they didn't even know what was the subject of the sentence? Well, come on, man. It's the same thing that went on with uh, Charles H. Russell. Won a cut, okay, around 1912 or 1913. And he suits. He was suing somebody, right? And then uh, they said, well, uh, Mr. Russell, can you, can you, uh, do you know what these are? These, can you read these Greek letters? Yeah. Okay, can you show us? Okay, uh, maybe. Can you read them? No. Oh, come on, huh? It's a fraud. I mean, I can see if you put up their PC. I can see, I mean, if you know Greek, you're going to know all the letters. I mean, it doesn't make a difference, okay? Basically, when you're reading these Greeks, you're reading also, I mean, Coptic, uh, the Coptic alphabet is like 90% of the Greek alphabet. You understand what I'm saying? They, they borrowed or stole it from them. Uh, so that's just that. Yeah, so, I mean... Um, and then you know, the Coptic alphabet has like what thirty-two uh, letters in their uh, in their uh, 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 collection, like twenty twenty something uh, Greek letters are in the pool of their alphabet, or whatever there is. <clears throat> I could see if a C was there. I mean, you know, that's kind of that's kind of strange, or P C, the anchor-looking letter. I mean, that you know. Incidentally, those two letters can be used as uh, transformatives, by the way. I mean, the sigma, you know. I can see if the P was up there or something like that, but I mean, you know. It will be funny if they use alpha. They just use alpha. Well, what is that? A. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. <coughs> Gamma's up there. Okay, Y. Mm. Kappa, okay, K. Mm. Okay, t uh, T, uh, tau, T. <coughs> I mean, you know. So for we, we, we learned in this study that theos okay, is in the predicate position. And the reverse volume control effect is true. Now, when you press a volume, okay, and I'll do it right now, and hopefully it, 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 it you know, let me see if it'll... Goes all the way like this. And uh, volume control. Okay. And I hope I'm still recording because maybe that'll turn it off. Okay. I don't know if this, it did that though. But when the volume gets higher, it's because it went to the right. You know, that little knob, you know. But the reverse in Greek is true. The position of Thaos here in the beginning of the clause makes a very forceful indication that Theos is deity because of the position of Theos or Theos. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I forgot to show you, okay, the translation for energy, so let me do that right now. Okay, I mean, their app can be radioactive, so it might turn off the recording. So if it does, uh, take care, guys. <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes it just shuts off. Maybe they don't want us to record. You know what I mean? All right, let's check it out. Let's see if there's a the here. Look at that. 
in the beginning? Wait a minute, but we already saw that this doesn't have an article. And a G. Now, let me see if I'm still recording. It'll be a shame if the, the radioactive app, you know, turn to shut it down. All right, it didn't. And a G. There's no T here. There's no the. Okay, to make this so-called thing definite. Right? Well, that's what they're saying. That they asked doesn't have an article, huh? So it's indefinite. So why did they put a the in front of beginning to make beginning definite, so-called? I mean, it's already definite, you know what I mean? It's already definite. But why did they make our uh, definite? I'm putting a the. Beginning. A the in the beginning. They know. They should know. They, knew, they said they knew that our G is one of these ten examples that a, a Greek noun can be definite without an article. There I go. I sound like Steve Summers again. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Is that clear? So if they already knew that, okay, in NRG, of, of NRG, well, I know they know that uh, theos is in a predicate position and it's already definite, even though it doesn't have an article. I mean, because it's a predicate adjective, you understand what I'm saying? And it doesn't need, huh, there. Now, you know, manuscript L, I mean, it's just gravy. I mean, we have an article that we could, you know, put in the face of the witnesses. Taste this baby out. Manuscript L does have, okay, Kai, Ha, Feas, and, you know, in uh, Ha, Lagas. Already has it, though. If you're witching one in and complaining about Feas, okay, not having an article, well, look at Manuscript L, like in Larry Bird. You know what I mean? Look at it. I already have a, listen, I already, I have a manuscript that has, uh, listen, Manuscript L that has Feas in there taking a shh. I already got it. No problem with me. No skin off my nose. I'm still retaining the little phrases, you know, from America. You know what I'm saying? While being in the Philippines. And then he in halagas. Kai halagas in prastan fan. Kai theas in halagas. Well, the, 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 the manuscript also says something like this. And he in halagas. Kai halagas in prastan fan. Kai ha. They are saying, how about that? You know what I mean? That's what I have. Why don't you have in your Bible? Let's see if they have it, though. Well, I'll, 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 I'll be fair. Let me see if they have. In the beginning, was uh, in the beginning, a God created uh, the heavens and the earth. Let's see if they have that, though. Okay, um, you know, let's see if I have it. Let me see about the, the um, Old Testament here. Where's the Old Testament? And the Old Testament uh, yeah, is right here. <clears throat> of course, they have commercials. This is the only biblical app that has commercials on it. Of course, Magic Wheat and Corn. I mean, it's just it's the only biblical app that I have, a.k.a. Echo, that, uh, that has commercials on it. The only one. Just say magic wheat and corn. Uh, just, 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 I'm, just, I'm not trying to be mean. Cruel. I forgot the linking word, and, and cruel. In the beginning, well, well, they said, hey, but, the, but then, um, you know, doesn't have no article there, a better sheet. Bereshit in Hebrew, not Bereshit. But it's definite here. In the in uh, God created. Wait a minute, it's no ha. Huh? It's no. There's not a hey uh, for uh, um, uh, in front of uh, Elohim there. Uh, but it's definite. I know. But there's no hey there. There's no ha. Huh? There's no article. There's no ha huh Elohim. You understand what I'm saying? Like uh, John. Uh, 11B in uh, Hebrew, in the Hebrew uh, New Testament by uh, G.G. Collier and T. Frey, 1817. But yet, they have, getting back to uh, Genesis, they have in the beginning, in the beginning. And not only that, a capital G, God. 
But wait a minute, Elohim is there. There's no, there's no the Elohim or ha Elohim in biblical Hebrew. But then they put the G. You can't pick and choose. <coughs> you can't do it. You're just being a hypocrite and a fraud. Okay, let's get back to this, guys. You understand what I'm saying? So it's that clear. There's ten different ways that a Greek noun can be definite without having an article. And I'll get into those uh, ten different ways, you understand what I'm saying, in our next study of Theos in a Predicate Position. Okay, so the Theos is a predicate adjective there. Okay? Ah. Uh, Theologically uh, speaking, it is saying something about the nature of Logos. That it's the very same nature as the, the Tom Theon and John 1-1-B. Now, the progression of, go of thought goes something like this. Subsistence, the title of John 1-1-A, number two, intercommunion slash relationship. Okay, so I guess that's the P. Number three, John 1-1-C, nature slash essence, and that's what's recorded. Yeah. Thus... Is in giving an indication of who uh, Logos is, that he has the very same nature as the Theon that he was, who he was, whom he was with. You know what I mean? Because it could go something like this. Yes, he subsisted, I agree. Subsisting is, or subsistence is the title of John 1 1 A that I gave. Okay? At Dawkins, I mean, you know. Something like that, that I, I mean, you know, I gave it, it has to be, you know, different construction, but anyway. Uh, so the deal is that, um, all right, but this is, this is a progression of thought here. What's the progression of thought? Well, I mean, not Logos only, not didn't own, listen, Logos didn't only continuously, timelessly, eternally subsist, but he was with another, John 1 1 B. But it's <laughs> not only that he was with another person and that he was different from the person whom he was with as far as nature goes, he has the same nature, and that's what the progression of thought comes into discussion in John 1 1 C. Subsistence, intercommunion slash relationship, and nature slash essence. That the Naya of Logos is just shame. Nature. As the Theos whom he was with. Okay? The same, meaning they're completely equal as far as okay, nature is concerned. So as far as essence is concerned, they're equal to each other. As far as forces is concerned, they're not equal. They're different persons. But the both of them are God. And there's only one God. So they are one according to nature and essence, but according to personhood, they're different. But what's the Holy Spirit, Ange? Well, he's, he's, he's writing this stuff through John. That's where he's at, and he shall not glorify himself, he shall glorify me. Amu, uh, says uh, Jesus okay, in this very gospel. So he keeps himself in the background. Correctly so. Okay? He doesn't need to speak about himself. Everybody knows who's a Trinitarian. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is on equal ground. You know what I mean? Incidentally, in uh, 115 of this uh, uh, text, okay, uh, John chapter 1, verse 15, uh, the apostle, or actually um, John, the, the, the Baptist actually says something that Jesus never said about him and the Father. Protos mu? That's all. That wasn't on the lips of Jesus when he was talking about the Father at any time. For the Father was before me. Protos mu never ran out of the lips of Jesus, I'll tell you that. It came out of the mouth of John. For he was before me, meaning Christ was before me. Protos mu. Jesus never said that before. Greater? So what? Uh, and the book of Kings says that God is greater than man. So, I mean, he took himself from the traditional nature, nature B or nature 2, and uh, he became, all right, uh, 
and greater, meaning the Father became greater than Jesus. But it doesn't mean that he existed before. Jesus never said of the Father and himself, Protos move, for the Father was before me. Never. Ever. Ever. Is that clear? Ever. Protos move. Never left the lips of our Lord. Never. <coughs> So theos in a predicate position, a okay, kai is the linking word. Theos is the predicate adjective found and recorded in John 1 1 C. And after that, you got the Greek word in, which is in the imperfect tense, which means was. The Hebrew is haya. Incidentally, in Mouse's complete expository dictionary of all the New Testament was, it needs to be revised. There's a couple of mistakes. I love Mouse, okay? <laughs> but you have, you know, Marfe uh, being uh, found. And record it in verse 14 of chapter 16 of Mark. It's not in verse 14. It's actually in verse 12. But anyway. Greek word Marfe being found uh, three times. Twice if you, you if you don't count Mark chapter 16. Verse 12. You know. But. Uh, I think uh, basics of biblical Greek. I don't have it in my collection, but I think that that's going to become the greatest uh, manual ever done. I mean, surpassing Manti's uh, uh, volume. I think Manti's is the the best. Actually, the exclamations is just impeccable. And not only that, I mean, he takes great pains along with Dana to actually, I mean, you know, uh, showcase the the Greek scholars that went before them and their works. It's very respectful. A.T. Robinson was actually the, the professor of uh, Manti. I didn't know that until, you know, a couple of years ago. But he did a better manual than A.T. Robinson's manual. Even though A.T. Robinson's manual was bigger. I mean, you know. <coughs> and that's just the deal about that. Excuse me, guys. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, how, uh, why I'm sorry, or Feas... It's an arthritis. I mean, it can be because, I mean, you know, to point out uh, what's the subject of the sentence, you know, that logos is the subject of the sentence and not the as. Also that, um, you know, um, it, it shows you that there is a predicate adjective, okay? That, that, that's a very good indicator. It's in, 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 you know, it's in, in the anarthra state, okay? So this is not a strange thing going on. And witnesses know this. I mean, you know that there are ten different ways. I mean, I, I, if it, listen, if in the listen, if the tower indeed have, if, if the tower does indeed have Greek scholars, they know that Greek nouns can be definite. There are ten different ways that a Greek noun can be definite without an atok. You know that. I'm not, not, nothing new. Dan Wallace actually has a good treatise of that. Okay, in his uh, beyond. You know, there's a Greek manual uh, be called Beyond the Basics, end quote. Okay, and, and see his uh, treatise of it, okay, on YouTube. It's incredible. I don't agree with everything in it. Not about the article thing, but about, um, you know, uh, well, we have to revisit, um, you know, about uh, the apparent Christophanies uh, made in the Old Testament because, you know, how can Jesus, uh, coming to the New Testament, how can... You know, Jesus be uh, the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, and be in the gospel of uh, Mary at the same time. Well, I'll, I'll turn that around and say, well, you know, right over here, and with this I'll close, right over here it says, Panta tia du agenata, okay, or agenato, I don't care how you pronounce that, and he made all things, Panta. So, I mean, if he made all things, and it says that he did make all things, or make all things, well, how can he make all things? Okay, if he's in the womb, and he's a young child, and then he, he's a man here upon earth. Well, it's easy. I mean, you know, according to the spirit of Lagos, I mean, you know, he was making, I mean, a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of creations, right? At the same time, you know, Jesus was in the womb, uh, he was a, a small child, and he was, he was doing his stuff ar 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 
around off you know, saying, upon earth. You understand know what I mean? That doesn't the creation, okay, uh, by a logos, okay, it doesn't doesn't stop, okay, be, you know, when when he enters into the womb. That's limiting, okay, um, you know, the omnipresence of a logos just become he just because he became Jesus, just became just be, he uh, you know enter into the womb, a virgin's womb. That means that all creation stopped by logos. Well, it says over here that that, that pantatia to againata. That, that God created all things through Logos. And if you're saying that, that that's impossible, okay, well, then this is not true. So that's why I don't agree everything with, uh, you know, with, oh, we have to revisit, we don't have to revisit anything, okay, about uh, the angel of the Lord, um, you know, idea found and recorded in, in, the, in the Old Testament, make, or, or, or that, you know, the, the dreams um, that the people had of uh, the angel of the Lord Okay, I mean, well, we have to re revisit that because the thing is that, you know, Jesus is in the womb, but at the same time, you know, uh, Joseph is receiving dreams from the angel of the Lord. Could have been the both. It could have been uh, uh, Jesus. Um, obviously, he was in the womb, but he could have been uh, making an appearance in a dream to Joseph also. Doesn't make a difference. You're, you're limiting, okay, uh, Jesus to just, you know, being in the womb and not doing anything while he was there for nine months. So during the nine months, he wasn't creating anyone at all? Well, then the Ponta Dia do again at has nothing to do with Christ. Can't say all things, some things. And then you have to jump into the pool and jump into the pool of the Jehovah's Witnesses and all other things were created by him. So he can't complain about all other things, you know, uh, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. If that's the, indeed the case, that he was in a womb and he couldn't create anything else. He couldn't create anything, I should say. So I disagree with that, you know, and that's um, um, that, uh, that, that, the stuff that, that, that Dan Wallace said about, you know, we have to revisit. We don't have to revisit anything. <laughs> we believe that Jesus made all things. In the womb and outside of the womb, he was busy uh, creating uh, things and people. So you mean to tell me that he wasn't creating anything when he was a baby? Okay, uh, uh, nine months? But what about the spirit of Jesus? At, at the same time, you're limiting the, the body of Christ, well, correctly so. You're, you're limiting, incorrectly so, uh, the spirit of Jesus doing things while in the womb. You know what I mean? And not only that, as a small child, as a one-year-old, he as a one-year uh, as a one-year-old, he wasn't creating. According to the spirit, as a two-year-old, three-year-old, I mean, you're limiting a lot, a lot of, yeah, yeah, billions and billions of people during that time. Okay, that he was a, a, a baby and a young child, or whatever the case may be. I, I, you're, you're taking billions of people that were created by the hands of Lagos. Okay. Away from him. What are you going to do about that? I think we have to revisit what Dan Wallace said. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? But getting back, he's a beautiful human being. I'm just saying. I just disagree with, with that aspect. Uh, well, we have to re revisit something because, I mean, what are you going to do about Jesus being in the womb and he can't be giving dreams at the same time? Well, if he can't be giving dreams at the same time, which is, which is uh, uh, easier, to, to, to give dreams or to create? I could, I, could put a, I could put a movie projector in front of somebody's face while they're sleeping, okay, and they say they can see a vision. It'd be a piece of cake. But creating? Uh, I can't do that. Logos was doing both, okay? He was giving visions and dreams to people, and he was creating, and that's just a deal. He was. <clears throat> so let's sum up, okay? We saw a predicate. We 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 saw a list of adjectives in Greek, okay? Predicate adjectives, okay? Um, attributive adjectives and subtypal adjectives, etc. And we also saw in other studies degrees of adjectives, okay? Positive degree, great. Comparative degree, greater. And superlative degree, greatest. Okay, like that. Like John 14, 28 has one of those examples. Okay? Uh, the comparative degree. Because you're comparing uh, uh, two persons there. Okay? 
It doesn't necessarily need to, need to be two persons. It could be a person and a thing, or a thing and a thing, and a person and a person. I mean, you know, after that, there's, there's nothing else to compare. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> so you have different adjectives, and you have degrees of adjectives. You understand what I mean? Just to, just to put that in the pool of the discussion before we close. Shop, you understand? And so we said in order to analyze okay, an adjective, okay, you have to have some knowledge going into your analysis that if you're looking at an adjective, okay, what an Amy what, right? Amy, a to be what, you know? Then you're probably looking at, okay, um, even if it's an Arthur's, you're probably looking at a predicate adjective, which this is. Theos is a predicate adjective describing Logos, okay? In and of itself, Logos doesn't mean deity. It doesn't mean deity. In and of itself. Even though the Hellenistic, Hellenistic tools, according to the handbook translation of the Gospel of John by the United Bible Society, you know, it's sold by the American Bible Society, right? Great volume, by the way. I bought that in the 1990s. I think like 1994 or whatever it was, you know. In the American Bible Society, okay, a store um, like uh, in front of Columbus Circle. I don't know if it's called Columbus Circle anymore. There's like, you know, problems with that you know, name. But it says it's an impeccable volume, and I actually have this as a convertible. A equals B. Okay, A equals B. Some people have this as a convertible. Okay, uh, God was the word, or uh, the word was God. I mean, well, Manti disagreed with that though, in his interview. Uh, with uh, him and Walter Martin, um, and that's on YouTube, by the way. I'm gonna get it in up there, Lord willing, but the whole thing together, not parts. You know, like a, a part A and part, you know, part one, part two, like that. You know, and I'm gonna have more graphics, and then I'll have the both of them sitting side by side on the table. You know, I already worked that out. You know, <coughs> you know, that's that'll be cool. And it's going to be, ampl my, my version is amplified, though. Okay, so their uh, version, no doubt, came from um, the Christian Research Institute cassette, which I had, and um, I left it in New York, and it was, you know, but, but in my files, I amplified it, I cleaned it up, and then I, I raised up the volume tremendously. So, so my version is going to be more stronger, you know, no pun intended, because it's talking about of theos, the force of theos, you know, the the, the, the strength of, of the force of it of, uh, is, is, is showing, you know, who Logos really is, you know. There is a predicate adjective, there's no doubt about that. And predicate adjectives sometimes are an author, so that's all there is to it, though. So, it is, so, theos is telling you, okay, meaning the word theos here, when you're looking at theos, you're, you're, you're I mean, you know, it, you're trained to understand that theos, okay, is a, theos is a narthris, and in that kind of adjective, okay, you're probably looking at a predicate adjective, and it's still definite anyway. Because there are ten different ways that a Greek noun can be uh, definite without the article, and two examples are right here. John 1, 1 A, or G is still definite, and theos in John 1, 1 a C is still definite also. Okay, so we learned that and we learn, you know, incidentally, the paradigm of, uh, of, um, Arche, 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 right? We saw that. We saw, um, we saw the, uh, that, um, then my baby was, 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 I don't know if my baby's awake, though. Let me see. I think she's awake, though, guys, so I better go. So, I mean, listen, we, we'll get into it, Theos in a predicate position a little bit more in more detail. Okay, we saw some examples of of, of, of um, we saw some examples of a predicate adjective that it can have an article and it might not have an article. Okay, attributive adjectives I can add this into the discussion. Sometimes are an artist and sometimes are articular. But when you're looking at um, uh, you know an adjective in Greek. 
and it doesn't have an article, you're probably looking at a predicate adjective. And when you're looking at an adjective in Greek that has an, uh, that has an article, you're probably, uh, I use that word, you're probably looking at an attributive adjective, okay? So it's no surprise that theos, okay, is anarthrous because predicate adjectives, okay, usually are anarthrous. And, and we're seeing that example here, and we saw an example in John chapter 4, verse 24. This is Angelo Quinones, and uh, actually um, uh, uh, Romans chapter uh, 4, verse 8 also. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the, the, the God of the necron, of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time of Jesus. And that holds the same now. And apart from that, we know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never have returned to this earth. There's no prophecy saying that they're going to return. Okay? But Joseph Franco and Rutherford actually uh, took advantage of the witnesses saying that Abraham, Isaac, and, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return. He said that nasty thing in the volume entitled, uh, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, end quote, and they're all dead. Almost. Okay? And if they're not, they're hanging by a thread. I'll tell you that right now. That's why you can't trust the witnesses uh, in their interpretation of this text. Made so many mistakes. Not even funny. Nobody was going to go to the moon in 1943. They made their prophecy. 24 people went to the moon. It's ridiculous. You know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You can, you can, people playing golf on the moon, guys. I, I take it back as an heiress tense. Actually, they played golf on the moon. I mean, they were making shots, just like Tiger Woods and Jack Nicholas, guys. And they said had the call to say that nobody was going to go to the moon, and 24 people did, including a $6 million man. It makes it 25. But I love that show, so I had to add him in. The Great Period of, uh, Pyramid of Egypt is on par with the Bible? Really? Rutherford disagreed with that. Jesus was going to return? 1914, 1925, 1941, 1975, 1988. It's like, a, it's like a football game. My baby is laughing. It's so funny. I mean, he said he made a worldwide tour right around, what, 1912 or whatever the game. He, he dropped dead in 1916. It couldn't be beyond that. As a matter of fact, I think, didn't the Ellen G. Uh, White die, like, uh, like very close to that? Time stopped when she was born in 1827, I'll tell you that, though. Denying the Trinity and saying, oops, I shouldn't have said that. So the Seventh-day uh, Adventist uh, church was born. Be careful if, you, if, you, if the church that you go to, I mean, goes by a guy or a lady, I mean, get out. Witness Lee Church, the Church of the Recovery. A worldwide sir. I mean, he said he made a worldwide sir. It's like Gilligan's Island. It's like the skin, it's like Ginger and Marianne, guys. <coughs> he didn't make a worldwide sir at all. Russell. It's like the castaways. Anyway, guys, um, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, <laughs> can we get off? How can you how can you put your turtle? Da I'm 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 hearing a baby right next to me. How can you put your your kids, your 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 babies, your your, your wife, your 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 pops, your mom? How can you put them in the in, in the hands of the, the the destiny of the witnesses of the watchtower, of the governing body? I mean, a nephew of Fred Franz. I mean, you know, crisis of conscience, writing crisis of conscience does not suffice for you. To get out? They lied to you guys? They spat right, they spat right on your face with the dates of Jesus' return. They spat right on your face. Oh, the light is getting brighter and brighter. Really? But if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? They made a mansion for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I mean, you know, what happened? They had two, only two cars in Beth Sarim. What happened? Abraham couldn't drive? Isaac didn't have a license? Or oh, somebody stole Jacob's license? Or what was the deal?
It chokes me up. Is Angelo, Angelo Quinones, I mean, I almost said my Greek uh, uh, sort of a counterpart, you know, Angelos, you know. <laughs> this is the deal. Well, ah, actually in Hebrew. But anyway, so anyways, um, leave a comment on the, on, the, on, the, on my channel, guys, on this uh, video. And uh, see if you can give me some ideas for new verses and stuff like that. And um, new Greek constructions, maybe some verses that I'm not looking at, that I'm forgetting, that comes into play when we're dealing with the witnesses. And, um, you know, give me a thumbs up. That'll help the channel, the circulation of the channel. The likes will, will really will help it. And also subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already, guys, okay? So, um, with that, we'll continue, uh, we'll, we'll continue to look at the house in a predicate position. And this is like the fourth study or the third study. And that will be coming on my next show in this uh, channel. And take care. I'll be right there, my love. Bye, guys. Take care. God bless.